Shade Ethnic Orchestra is the sample library I've been searching for my entire life. It's the perfect tool for anyone writing for Asian films, arranging for a Chinese orchestra, or even anyone who just wants a little of that Far East flavor in their compositions. Finally, instead of having to bridge several libraries that all sound different to get a full ensemble, you have access to the whole Chinese orchestra, all recorded in the same space. I want to tell you, if you're new to writing for Chinese instruments, it's okay to sometimes write outside of the pentatonic scale. No one is going to judge you for breaking the rules of Chinese music. What I find in working with clients in China and Vietnam is that having these sounds available actually frees you up to be more daring with your compositions. You can feel free to experiment with harmony and melody while still giving your music the unmistakable sound of the region by using traditional instruments. So, let's take a look at the piece. Let's play it once through with no talking. The title of this piece is Hutong Hero. Hutong is Chinese for the small alleyways, especially in Beijing, where you can find the real culture of the city. Tweak Tone Labs, the studio where we recorded all of this, is in a Hutong. So, we start with a couple pads. This one is Mental Waterfall, along with just the percussion stem of the pad, The Elements. And on top of that, we have the expressive Arhu, holding a sustained note. When we get into the piece, you can hear a lot of these short notes, and I'll solo them so you can hear them. And these are the Arhu 1 and Arhu 2 ensemble patches playing their short notes, along with the bass mornhur, which is playing its ostinato. And up here you have the percussion. I like to use a lot of different percussion sounds, even though I like to keep the pattern fairly consistent. Something cool that you can do with the X3M engine is to pitch one sound across the whole keyboard to do something like this and make timpani out of the dagu center. For those of you who don't speak Chinese, dagu just literally means big drum. Same with zhonggu, which is middle drum, xiaogu, which is small drum, and chogu, which is hand drum. For this next section, I'm using the Morinhur Ensemble as the lead line, with the Mongolian Humai Ensemble as the backing vocals. 
The first thing you'll notice when you start playing with the Morin Hur is that, although it sounds like a cello, it only goes down to middle F. The reason for this is that the strings of the Morin Hur is made from horsehair that's pulled flat like a violin bow. And you know, as you start to detension a violin bow, the strings come apart, the horsehairs, they lose their integrity. And so there's a limit to how low you can detune a Morin Hur before the strings start to fray. Still, you can get some really great long legato lines with the Morin Hur. using our polyphonic legato samples, and also play chords. Without even having to change patches. As we get into the main section of the piece, now I'm bringing in the expressive arhu as the sole instrument. Although our arhu 1 and village arhu are both very useful, I wanted to give you a solo arhu that could instantly give you that emotional, authentic Chinese sound that's become a mainstay in my own film scores. So I added the expressive arhu as a personal addition right at the end of the recording sessions. It has three styles of vibrato, which you can easily control with CC1 or the mod wheel. No vibrato. Progressive, violin style vibrato. and over-the-top Arhu-style pressure vibrato. The styles of legato change too as you use the mod wheel. I really wanted to make an instrument where you didn't have to learn any complicated controls, and you could just play intuitively with modulation and expression. While sampling this instrument, I played each note thinking of them as part of a soaring film score melody. So the performance isn't totally perfect, but I feel like the energy and the imperfections make it feel even more like a physical instrument. This next section is a perfect example of what I was talking about before, using Chinese instruments in harmonically and melodically adventurous ways while still retaining some of that traditional sound. This is a G minor major 7 chord, going to the tonic in major, so D major 7. And I really outlined the chord itself in the melody here with the arhu. And you can hear how the expressive arhu really gives a nice emotional quality to this line, while still making it a little bit traditional. Here I'm using the western string section, violins 1, 2, viola, cello, bass, along with the arhu. And for all of those, I'm using a Flatus Chapter 1, which is a really great strings library, also by Strezov Sampling. I find that Jade Ethnic Orchestra fits with a Flatus Chapter 1 really well, because actually the third microphone positions in both libraries are using the same physical space. We wanted to give the library that big scoring stage feel, so we captured each instrument in the close and decatry positions in the best sounding big room in Beijing, and also used a pair of Coles 4038s at the back of the room to get a warm, round sound that takes a little bit of the edge off of those very bright Chinese instruments. These were all mixed for just the right balance, and then played over speakers in the Sophia Session Studio to create one of the biggest physical chamber reverbs ever used in sampling. Moving on, you can hear how the Morin Hur Ensemble really complements the solo arhu. Next, we introduce a new instrument, the Chinese santur called the Yangqin. I'm sure you're all familiar with the Santur, but if you've ever thought, I wish I had something that was just a bit rounder and less bright sounding, but had that same percussive quality, the Yangqin is just for you.
And now the Aru ones take the lead line. And here, I'd like to show you how I use expression maps for these multi-articulation instruments in Cubase. For all of the bowed strings, we have at least four articulations. Legato, Staccato, Pizzicato, and Tremolo, which I've set up as a multi in contact and used a free script which you can find online called KS Router to make key switches for each. If you're working in Pro Tools, Logic, or DP, you can still use this, just having the key switches be notes at the bottom of the piano roll. But in Cubase, you can save it as an expression map, using the same one for each family of instruments, so the articulations are always right there in front of you. I want to note here that even though legato and tremolo are already in the same patch in Jade Ethnic Orchestra, if you set this up with two of the same patches and hit the key switch for tremolo on one of them, it will stay tremolo even after you close and open your project. I'm sure you're already thinking about how Jade will find its way into your template, but there's another trick I want to show you that I find really useful. Any of the faders in this interface can be assigned to learn MIDI CC with just a simple right click and a fader move. Then it's that simple to create interesting effects like, one of my favorites, MIDI automated fades up of the hall reverb at the end of phrases for choirs. Or just to find the right balance quickly to suit your music. So here you have the hulu -se, an instrument that doesn't get much attention in sound libraries, although it has a really nice, round, clarinet-like tone that works great in scores. I think the reason you don't see it sampled very often is it's extremely hard to get short notes on the hulu -se without producing a stop tone like this. But for the session, I figured out how to do it by breathing in on the low notes. And playing the high notes like this. which finally gets us a real short sound on the hulu -se that you can use in your scores. Just know that if you're giving it to real players, they might not be able to do it without producing that sound. And here we have one of my favorites, the only brass instrument in the collection, the swana. Actually, it's a double reed instrument, but it has such a loud sound and a brass trumpet-like bell that it's considered a brass instrument in Chinese culture. Just know if you're writing for a live ensemble and you include a swana, you won't be able to hear anything else except for maybe some really loud percussion. Although I tried to feature as many instruments as possible in this piece, I did want to come back to the expressive arhu at the end, but I also wanted to end the note on tonic with vibrato, and since arhu has an open string on D, I chose to have it fade out and end just on the xiao. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned something about Chinese instruments that will help you when you write your music with Jade Ethnic Orchestra. By the time this video is out, the library should already be available, and I really think it's an incredible value for what you get. I know it's going to make a huge difference in my own composing, and I hope it will inspire you to write in ways you may not have thought of before. I'm Seth Tui, conductor, Arhu player, and co-producer of Jade. Big thanks to George Strezov, Alex, Alex, and the rest of the team in Sofia, and of course, all the other musicians and engineers here in Beijing.